All right, welcome back for season two of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. My guest today, the notorious Michael Mesa Net. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me today at Space Brain Studios. This is the yeah. relaunch. The relaunch, man. Now I noticed, Jason. I had to I have to bring this up right out of the gate. Yeah. Last time I saw you was at the beginning of the pandemic. We're around the middle. <laughs> oh, I don't know where we're at in it now, but we're still in it. But we are going 100% in Vegas here pretty soon, which I'm pretty stoked about. But the last time I saw you, about a year ago, on your show, you were the more clean-cut, uh, not what I want to never say conservative, but certainly, uh, you know, you, your, your whole look and your image, you're working full-time, you're traveling around the world doing sound and audio like you do. But now you're looking a little bit more like the original Froberg that I knew. Oh yeah, with the gruff and the I hair got, growing out, I the hippies the coming, coming back. back. Yeah. That happens during a pandemic, right? Oh yeah, big time, man. I stopped. Uh, I I was shaving for a while in there, and then I just uh, I stopped when I had to pack everything up and relocate and everything. It just uh, I said fuck shaving and. You know, I'm just gonna let just loose. Let loose, man. What? What am I? What yeah, am I yeah. shaving Who for? Who you are trying to impress? Right. Well, you're impressing me. Thank you. And everybody out there on the internet, of course. Hi, everybody out there on the <laughs> internet. Yeah, it's good to be back, man. I mean, uh, like I was saying, we did a big move. Uh, you know, we had to get out of the old house, and and we got this new place going. We got this beautiful new studio set up, and it's an awesome studio, by the way. It's a home studio that I know you've got. Every room is a cool. That's how it is with you. I know in your studio, in your world. One room's got the electric drums and the, the mixers. The other room's got the PAs and all the different equipment for everything that you do. Are you uh, going to be resuming any musical projects for yourself where you're actually playing bass again? I I would hope so at some point, right? Uh, I haven't really been playing since the, uh, the pandemic happened and everything shut down. I've just been focusing on the YouTube channel and uh, and the studio stuff, doing like some video production for people. Nice. Yeah. So we were doing commercials for um, like Amazon web pages and stuff like that, product demos and anything I can, you know, make money with with my equipment. Uh, you know, you just got to just go for it, really. Everything you can. Well, I did want to share something today in specific before yeah. we even get crazy into the discussion. Uh, recently... I was nominated by the Las Vegas Cannabis Awards, which is an annual event here in Vegas where they basically, it's like, you know, the uh, the Grammys and all the other award shows. They get a bunch of people together. I imagine it's a green carpet. Uh, all the, all the uh, various stoners, uh, as far as uh, uh, business-wise, models, photographers, uh, writers, growers, trimmers, social influencers. Well, I am nominated for artist slash painter, and I've brought some of my work, of course, to share with everybody today. Um, so what I would like for you to do, where am I looking here? Which camera Right here, I? camera two. Right there, camera two. I am asking of you, Internet, and everybody out there in it, and I know a lot of you got plenty of time during the day, so uh, you can do, and you can vote every single day. So what I need is your vote. You have to now, till June second, once a day. Go to LasVegasCannabisAwards.com. <laughs> register and log in because you can't vote if you don't register and log in. It's simple. You make up a name and an email, and they send you a. Uh, what do you call it, a verification. And then you can, you don't have to keep doing that. You could just uh, go ahead and vote every day. Click on vote 2021. Click on local community. Click on the category, artist, painter, but most importantly, every single day, vote stoner dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your votes. <laughs> I appreciate all your support, and uh, we'll see what happens here. The actual award ceremony is July 10th here in Las Vegas. Uh, I already have a booth or table at the event, so I will be showing all my artwork and hanging out. Of course, everyone's invited. It's a it's a public event, and uh, I only I only run to win. All right. That's so right. So bottom line is vote for me because I want to win. I want to go up in there and get that trophy. But at the same time, it'll be fun just to hang out with a bunch of stoners smoking all the best weed in Vegas at an event.
Hell yeah. And wh- uh, where is it located at the event? I don't know the exact location. I don't even know if that for sure has been announced. It will be on the website, of course, LasVegasCannabisAwards.com. And you can go check that out. You'll find out soon enough. Awesome. Well, uh, good luck to you on that. I know I've been voting for you, and Angela's been voting for you. Thank and you. now hopefully Thank all you. of our guests. Uh, I truly appreciate you know. that. Thank you very much. And uh, recently I've also done a, I've been doing a, uh, you know, the Raiders are now in Vegas. Yes. Uh, uh, I was very proactive in making that happen. That's <laughs> behind the scenes information I'll share later. I'm teasing that. But in the meantime, uh, I've been doing a show, back to doing my uh, uh, show Raider Fan Radio on YouTube. So you can go to that also to my YouTube channel, Raider Fan Radio. You'll see our uh, weekly show. Been promoting on that too, too and I've fortunately been getting a lot of support from the Raider fans and just people in general that, li- that like that kind of talk radio and stuff. And uh, also getting the band together, Raiderhead. We're going to be playing at Raider games and Raider events here as the uh, hopefully opening up 100% with the stadium and everything else. But I, I'm starting to just feel good about what's going on in Vegas, man. I mean, it's, it, all my musician friends are contacting me saying, dude, I can't believe I got a gig and da-da-da-da. And I finally got to do my first gig coming back over at Counts Vamp off of Sahara in Las Vegas. And I did a show there last Saturday, first show in a year, as far as playing on a big stage like that. And, man, I swear, it was like being a kid in a sandbox, just having fun. And we played for like an hour and a half straight. We just wanted to keep going, you know. But I, it just was such an awesome reminder of not only what it was like to get to do that all those times and get to do it again, but just to feel it finally come back, especially after all this time. Like I said, in the last year, I haven't seen you. There hasn't been a lot of lights at the end of the tunnel yeah. uh, for too long. So now we're starting to get some of those lights going. So I'm happy about that. I've got tunnel vision and I'm focused. <laughs> Let's go. Let's bring it back 100%. I love it. So Vamped was actually open doing shows now. Anyway, again, huh? It's not just Vamped. Other clubs, of course, too. Backstage Bar and Billiards, for, uh, Fremont Country Club. The, the Double Down, the Punk Club there. Over by the airport, nice. Um, the dive bar, all of them. I just actually did a bunch of repairs over at the dive bar. So, by the way, everybody and, who and I'm hates sure they playing need, at and the I'm dive sure they bar, needed those repairs too. Big time. I mean, the place was dilapidated. So, well, wait, before you yeah. go further, that speaking of repairs, last time I saw you at the dive bar, and this is why they need repairs, Jason. <laughs> Uh, put his base through the wall. Ah! <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure they needed uh, repairs. But anyways, you just redid the whole sound system or yeah. what? Yeah, that was back in the Cracker Man days. Me and Tyler always smashing guitars up. Yeah, man, yeah, you guys time. literally tore the walls down. It was super fun. I would, uh, I mean, I miss those days, man. I was just, just having a blast. So you but redeemed no, we yourself. Did, huh? yeah, well, <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. No, we, uh, we, we fixed that place up really good. Uh, we put uh, new monitors in there. So they have six 1,000-watt, like, EV wedges. Got a nice microphone package. Nice. I went through this giant pile of shit cable that was just getting piled up in all these different locations. I play there the bar. all the time, and I see yeah. those piles. Dude, yeah. there's no piles anymore. I fixed every single cable. Everything's working again. Um, I'm renting them some subs right now, and so they actually have like front of house functioning. Uh, we're repairing the whole thing. We put an X32 in there, like a digital desk. I put a bunch of lights in there and a lighting console, and so like you could see that it. The whole it's a new it's a new dive bar, nice. man. It's, it's a, a new dive yeah, bar. Yeah, you definitely gotta go check out the dive bar, man. It is a lot better than it used to be. You know and what? That's the place in town where where I mean it's surprising. You know, there's so many big, cool clubs in town with the lights and the whole stage and big rooms. The dive bar is just always there. Yeah. Like no matter what, you know, and it's like anytime you're cruising through town, you're going by it, you you just wanna go in, hang out, have a beer. Always the best punk bands in town, that's for sure. Big time. Uh, but not just punk rock, uh, heavy metal, all kinds of various styles of music. But it's definitely a, a it is exa- exactly what it says on the, the wall, <laughs> the dive bar. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. And they do uh, like they do open mic night. So if you want to go see comedy on Mondays, they do open oh, mic nights. Oh, that's cool. I think every Thursday is a, uh, is a drag show. And I, I I mixed one of the drag shows. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, they're having a blast. So I mean, it's it's a it's a very eclectic like uh, booking over there. Hey man, man. The, the variety is the spice of life. You got and I've, I've always said that about some of these bars and clubs too. You just gotta utilize every night of the week to do something cool that's gonna bring people in the door, spend money, and have a good time. Oh yeah, big time. So and uh, hopefully we'll have Nate on the uh, show, the owner of the Dive Bar. 
Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I've known him forever. And, uh, so he'll be coming on the show here in a few is weeks. Is John and, still doing sound? No, we got, um, actually, uh, Brandon Hoffman is over there taking over the dive bar. Brandon and, Hoffman's doing sound there now? Yeah, he is fantastic. He's a really smart guy. And, uh, hopefully he sticks around for a while. I know he's, uh, like he's, he's a very talented engineer and things are starting to open up. So and that's the hard part, you know, with, uh, with a smaller club like that is getting uh, a solid guy to be there all the time. Sure. But, uh, no, we're trying to get a nice little, uh, line of cats that can cover the place really well and run a digital console and they can operate the lights and everything like that. And, you know, do multiple monitor mixes and everything. Well, so. if you go to the dive bar, tell them space brain studios. Sent yeah. You. Space uh, SBS Productions. SBS Productions. Yeah, that's what we're calling the the the. PA well, you'll always be Space like Brain to me. Yeah, it is. It's Space <laughs> Brain. It's Space Brain Station Productions. SBS. You know. Nice. It just looks nicer on the logo and the invoices and shit oh, like that. Right. So look at you. You got the look. Your your look is going old school, but your yeah. But the, but the corporate new vibe is kicking in to try to go out there and get some business. I'm really I'm really trying to get some business going, and like I said, I'm I'm doing the dive bar. We're also doing uh, Rockstar Bar and Grill. I uh, I've been there one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw Kiss This, Scotty Griffin's band there not too long ago, a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, I was, uh, I was actually there for that show, man. Yeah, oh, well, I so. didn't see you. What are you doing over there? Uh, we we just took over sound for that. Me and uh, my buddy Paul are over there. We fixed the place up and oh, and, dang. and got so you're it all, all over the nice. place. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to do whatever I can, man. You know, and and like I said, I'm like renting PA's out to different places. I was just doing a wedding, and you know, it's uh. It's it's been getting it's been getting back to it, man. Well, like I said, man, things are opening up. We're having a good time, and uh, opportunities are starting to come our way. And I mean, in Vegas, man, I can't believe it's it's just this time last year you drove down the strip and it was a ghost town, and, and there was literally nobody on there, and all this fear and and uncertainty oh, yeah. that was about. So yeah, just to get everything going the way we need it to be in the direction, starting to get some uh, some adrenaline going. Some hopes, some happiness, some uh, good times ahead. Yeah, it, it definitely feels good to be out mixing shows again and, and seeing everybody having a good time, man. And, you know, it's like uh, people are still wearing the masks, but it's starting to come together. You know, we can actually do live music. Some people are wearing the masks. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad to see people, like, kind of getting out of the whole uh, headspace of, you know, you got to wear the mask in your car by yourself. Yeah, and shit, yeah, you know? yeah, like yeah. Everyone was really scared <laughs> that, to death that, that's over the this part thing. That, that's the part that's been driving me crazy is just obviously having to deal with that. And I understand health concerns, of course. Yeah. And I understand protocols to an extent. But when things get to the point where it just doesn't even make sense at all, no yeah. matter how you slice it, you got to at least, uh, well, keep questioning it. <laughs> but anyways, it, it, if some people have to go out to wear a mask still to go get some groceries or to go to this or that, whatever, you know, they're probably going to hold on to that as long. And I'll go further than that. I think people are going to want to still wear the masks. Yeah. I think some people, because especially the ones that are walking down in 100-degree weather by themselves in the middle of nowhere wearing a mask, I think they just want to wear a mask. Yeah. You know? It's like it's like uh, some people have just, uh, they want to hide their face. They want to go out the door and they don't want to face the world. They just want to put on <laughs> some shades and put a mask on and, and disappear. Yeah, and uh, I mean it's it's probably helping a lot more than just protecting against COVID, you know. And there's a lot of like uh, just the air is not clean. I know. A well, lot then of... we all need respirators. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, if people want to wear a mask, like I mean, remember the, the heavy metal, the movies, heavy metal, the animation, you know, those post-apocalyptic images of yeah of uh, you know the guys out there with the respirator type apparatus over their head out in the middle of the uh, the wastelands. It's getting to that point. Yeah, it is getting well. It was getting to that point. I I've been seeing a lot of people kind of blow it off and and starting to get back to normal, which is thankfully, man. I mean, I was getting really tired of the whole uh, end of the world narrative, man. Where <laughs> they want to keep us trapped in our houses for another couple of years. Well, they it's did it. Ridiculous. Let's not forget that they did it, though. Yeah. Let's not. I hope. I hope at least during the course of this resurgence that I'm hoping for, and I think we're all looking forward to, that we don't forget. How overnight, literally, the world just shut down. It, it was crazy. the most unprecedented event in our lifetime. You know, oh yeah. Period. There's nothing more gnarlier than the whole world shutting down all at once overnight. So uh, you know, hopefully, as things do build back up, and we at least remember that, keep that in mind. Not necessarily as a, a warning, as far as 
uh, uh, expressing your freedoms and living your lives, but what can happen? How a, how a trigger like that can be pulled by somebody, I don't know who, 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 who made the call, hey, we're going to shut down the world, you know? That yeah. came from somewhere up there. We'll find out later, hopefully down the line, probably not till after we're dead. <laughs> but the point being is that somebody did that, and it happened. And uh, I, I'm hoping it does, not hoping, I don't want it to happen again. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna do everything in my power to be vocal, to be to still express myself and be free. And I'm seeing more people do that too. And it's like a, it's like we're uniting now. Hopefully, <laughs> we're uniting together with this vibe of, no, 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 no. You're not gonna take this away anymore. We're we're gonna hold on to this a little bit more, uh, like it's precious, and we want to hold on to it. Well, I'd love to see that, man. I'd love to see a lot of people unite because uh, we've spent the last few years just totally dividing ourselves as far as far as we can and putting all these walls up and putting everybody in groups and just labeling people without knowing who the fuck they are. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm real tired of seeing that attitude running around and, you know, people just need to love each other and take care of each other. And, you know, we're all just we're all just messed up human beings man, <laughs> doing our best out here. Nobody's got the answers. And uh and so it'd be nice to see a lot of people kind of getting along and just, you know, kind of breaking those walls down that got built up over these like last four or five years. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that when when we are shut down like that, it's easier for people to start to become even more divided because it, oh, yeah. they're sitting there home stewing on everything like that. You know, they're 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 they've got too much time on their hands <laughs> to do and think the wrong things. You know, and that's what this whole thing, this whole pandemic has done from us. It took away our sense of purpose of day to day of wanting to get things accomplished and wanting to try to achieve things. It put a damper on all that. And I think that's pretty much where all the, uh, like you said, that uh, despair that everybody's been in the funk. Now it gave people way too much time just to think about all these reasons why to become even more divisive over it. So if anything, this whole resurgence, I think will, it's not going to get rid of all that. There'll still be that out there, but the resurgence I think will at least, uh, take away from that you know just it'll dissipate a little bit we'll focus now more on good things <laughs> positive <laughs> things we definitely have a lot of positive things to be thankful for man i mean anything post pandemic is like at least we're not in 2020 anymore right yeah. no matter how bad it gets from <laughs> is now is that gonna be the t-shirt yeah at, at least... least we're not in 2020 anymore <laughs> i'm telling you man right it's uh, i mean it, it could always be worse it could always be 2020 again because i mean how how much worse can it no. get than that no <laughs> oh dude it's uh I'm just thankful to be moving forward. I know a lot of my friends have been getting a lot of uh, big gigs coming up, man. And uh, uh, I know corporate work's coming back. We got the, what, the construction or the concrete expo coming up in June. Everything's opening up in June. And uh, Yeah, man. I was pretty much making my whole, my, all my bones were made off of either music or art. And a big part of that artistic uh, aspect of what I do to make a living was doing comic book conventions, yeah, um, and all the science fiction and horror conventions. That's what I, I've been doing those since uh, 1980, somewhere around there, 81. Since I was a little kid, you know, going to those conventions, and it was just so weird for that all to be gone. And now you're actually starting to see them put them on the calendar. Now I will say this though, even though the the calendar's starting to fill up, I'm still uh, not pessimistic, but I guess apprehensive or just kind of waiting to see if they actually happen. Yeah. You know, like, let, let's, I want to see an actual big concert at the new stadium or, you know, something happen, something where you're going, okay, all right, all right, fine. We're, things are going, we're, we're going to start going to more events again and, and it's going to be back to at least where people are going to want to get out of the house and still let the rat race commence back to where it was. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, that was everything, man. Like, uh, even though I do live events for a living, it's like that was really my big, uh, big break. You know, I'd always go out and see a concert at least once a month, see some big show, and really just let loose and have a good time. And being trapped in your house for a year, and uh, man, it's just uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some big shows again. We had so many great tickets lined up, and they all got canceled. And we're, you know, some of them. I don't know if you had any tickets lined up for oh, 2020. Something but, I am a little bit disappointed about yeah. is that Primus. I'm not. Pr- yeah. disappointed about Primus. I'm disappointed that their tour, not only did they not play the show they were going to do here last year where they performed the whole Farewell to Kings yeah. tribute to Rush, 
but obviously that was taken off the the bill last year. But now they've re-released their schedule, and Vegas is not on that list. And I looked right away. California, Arizona, you know how it is. You look for, you try. They always squeeze Vegas right in there between California, Arizona, Utah, around there. No Vegas on that list. Uh, Hopefully they call an audible down the road when they they do the tour. But, man, that was the one, sure, that was probably the the ticket I had that I was going to go get, make sure I was at that show, was to see Primus perform all the whole album of all uh, of uh, Farewell to Kings by Rush. Yeah, that was going to be amazing, man. I was also, um, obviously, you know, I'm a huge Primus fan. I have oh, the, you? the Blue Collar Bastards band that I do with the Primus Tribute. Les Claypool and, Jr. over yeah, here. I try to do my best, man. And, uh, yeah, I was really excited to uh, to go see them do a, the Rush album. Anytime they commit themselves to something like that, like I know they did the the Pink Floyd stuff a couple times, and, you know, they really love Rush, so they're going to be they're gonna kill that album. They're definitely gonna. They'll definitely come through Vegas, man. I've I've gone out of my way to go see them in California, or Arizona, whenever they like say they're not coming to Vegas. Sure. And then by the time I, you know I go see that concert and I've paid for the tickets, they announce a Vegas show. They already got dates in <laughs> Vegas, man. Yeah, like. Uh, but you're still win win for you because you get to go see them somewhere else and in Vegas. Oh, I definitely do. You know, I I, I see both shows for sure. It's not just because I drove to California to see them. I'm gonna skip the Vegas show. I'm gonna see all the fucking shows. You know, so. Uh, but uh, they'll come to Vegas. But, uh, speaking of Rush, uh, as we all know, the the great Neil Peart uh, died a oh, year yeah. ago, a little over a year ago, uh, from brain cancer. Uh, a lot of, of us didn't know about it, but it, it seemed sudden. But apparently he was dealing with it. Um, even in their last tour that they, that they shredded over here at the MGM um, back in 2015. But So anyway, so Neil Peart died in... And uh, Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson have been getting back together and talking and hanging out. Oh. I mean, they're obviously, they'll always mourn Neil Peart, and we all will. But at some point, I would like to see, not Rush. Rush is unfortunately done. Yeah. You know, if they want to go out and get another, I don't, I don't see them going out and getting another drummer and calling it Rush. But I do see them getting together because they've been known each other since they were, uh, elementary school kids they're lifelong buds you know and they're still here and they want to make music so i do see them going out there getting a drummer auditioning drummers finding the guy to be whatever incarnation of it is that they're going to create and i would like to throw my name in the hat right now (laughs) officially stoner dude here in vegas would like to audition for the new version of whatever it is getty lee and alex lyson are gonna do just in case you're watching. I know Getty's watching. Of course Getty's watching. Why wouldn't <laughs> Getty be watching? You know, that's a, that would be uh, uh, amazing to see you play all those tunes. Man. Just, 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 no, no, just to make new music with them. I want to make new music oh, okay. with them. I'm not talking about, again, I'm not talking about recreating Rush. That's it. They did it. They, they can't do it better than that. It's done. What, what's the new music you're going to come out with? Just get me in there. I just want an audition. Just get me in the room. <laughs> All right, just put me behind a drum set. Let me take a picture, put it on Facebook, and I could be real popular and have lots of friends. No, for real, I would. That would be an awesome opportunity. That would be amazing. Yeah, they did. They did wrap up the Rush thing really well too with the 40 year anniversary tour. You know, they did 40 solid years of of Rush and then the last retired r- the before la- he died. The last Rush tour I saw here in 2015 in Las Vegas, and I saw it at Irvine Meadows. I saw my twice that year, same week. I knew it was going to be their last tour. At least that's what they were saying it could be. So I saw that show, and not only what, first of all, they haven't even had an opening band in almost 20 years. That's how they play like two hours. They just keep going and going and going. They play a really long, awesome show. And uh, the last part of the show, the last uh, 30 or so minutes, 35 minutes of the show, was the ultimate Rush medley of all the greatest Rush riffs of all time, Cygnus X1, uh, stuff off of Hemispheres, you know, deep cuts, deep, like, hardcore Rush fans would love off of Caress of Steel. Neil Peart came out. Well, he had it behind him, and they pushed it out, but it was his old drum set, which is nicknamed Chromie. It was the Chrome Ludwig kit that he played during 2112 and all those years. And it was like going down a a space uh, time capsule, you know, watching them uh, uh, go back and just do these old riffs that they would never do, hardly ever. And it was like going out, like with a bang, you know, boom. Where It was the grand finale of Rush. 
And like I said, they can never, ever do better than that. That was as good as it gets, you know? But, uh, man, yeah, no more Rush concerts. But Getty and Alex again, if you're watching, right here on what the, the Space... To, is Space Brain Studios or Space Brain Space Space Station? Space Brain Station. Station. It's Space Brain Station. Yeah. I'm spacing... My brain is spacing right now just saying those words fast. Space it's, Brain Station. It's a little bit of a, a of a what is that called? A tongue twister. Yeah, it's twisting me up right now. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of liked it, you know. It's a it's a whole bunch of different things whenever you separate the words, but you know, because it's a space station, space brain. Space so cadet. okay, now let me flip this flip the script on you on you here. Primus. Yeah. Let's say Les Claypool. Hope you live forever. Me too. But for some reason, Les Claypool can't go out. And do a Primus tour or a show or whatever, and he's done. He can't play no more, whatever, for whatever reason. But yet, here's the other guys in Primus, the guitar player and the drummer. And, yeah. they, and, they, and they want a Les Claypool kind of guy <laughs> to go play with. Will Jason Froberg step up and be the new bass player for Primus? I mean, that would be amazing, but that would never happen. You know what I mean? Like Come on! Primus, Primus I, is less than learn. Why can't we live in a fantasy world? I would time? love to do that. I mean, fantasy world, yeah, hell yeah, I'd, sh I'd step up and do that, man. I just <laughs> commit every waking hour of my life to making that happen, for sure. I mean, a world without Primus would be terrible for all the people a who want to take... A world without Primus. <laughs> that would be sad, yes. Uh, you know? <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, Primus has always been uh, been less and lure from the beginning. He's never replaced uh, Larry Lalonde for for a moment in that band. You know, he's always called it something else if he's playing with a different guitar player. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But I'd, you'd I'd want to jam in the room with them. I, mean, I would love if that. If anything, that would like that would like uh, validate your Les Claypool skills to the ultimate degree. If you oh, right. could actually play those songs. You know, uh, maybe Lusty, uh, he goes, uh, has dinner, goes to the bathroom, whatever. He leaves the room. <laughs> you know, you walk in and you play uh, Tommy the Cat or something like that and at least have a chance to play with those guys. That's how I compare my whole thought process of getting a jam with the leftover of Rush. Right. You know, just to go, okay, if I could play this song with these guys, then I know. I could throw down the mic or throw down the sticks or whatever. Oh man, I mean, it would be amazing. It would be amazing for sure. But the, the, I mean, I, I doubt I could keep up with those guys. Honestly, they're nah, incredible. I doubt they're incredible, man. I, I I was listening to uh, when they got back together with Tim Alexander, the the uh, original drummer. Right. It was well, like, he was like the sixth drummer. He but was the sixth the drummer, first, but he's the drummer that album. when they broke out big. Yeah, they were going through another drummer like every eight months in the beginning. Quintessential Primus. Yeah, t yeah, Tim and Larry Lalonde, man. Uh, but they got back together with him and they were going to do, uh, you know, they were to jam and they recorded the jam and they were figuring out all these songs and it was just incredible, man, just incredible. And they hadn't played together in years and they just jump right in. I mean, the talent of these, these three musicians is just f above and beyond anything, man. They're See, you only need three guys, three extremely talented individuals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're pretty amazing, man. They're pretty amazing. That'd be, a, that'd be very intimidating for me for sure. But uh, no, I'd love it. I'd love it. And hopefully I get to go out and start jamming some uh, Blue Collar Bastards again, man. I know we got some new venues opening up that are into the tribute act thing. So, I mean, Is the yeah. guitar player for Blue Collar Bastards, Anthony, available? Actually, I'm kind of calling him out here now. But <laughs> uh, is he available in case there is an opportunity for Blue Collar Bastards to get back together and play some shows? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to find out whenever that comes Have you talked to him. Anthony recently? I haven't talked to a lot of people recently. I'm digging man. it. I'm digging it here a little yeah. bit. No, I know Anthony's been doing a uh, a Twitch live stream. He is named Twitch. What's that? It's uh, video games, man. So I can pull it up for you. Even let's see if we can find him here. But uh, he's, he's called... playing video games. Yeah, you should check it out, man. Everybody should go and check it out. Uh, he goes by the name Doctor Helltrack, <laughs> and uh, and he. Add. How do How you, you can... on when you're making a song and you add those? Hang on, that's a that's just uh advertisement popping up on this freaking thing. Here we go, Helltrack the civilian. Let's look up. Uh, let's look up one of his videos here. Oh, he's going live right now. 
<laughs> Ironically, he's live right this minute. Let's wait for this commercial to end. 13 seconds. So, yeah, no, he does. Uh, he's right now, he's playing Far Cry 3, The Return of Blood Feast Island on hardest difficulty. The guitarist for Blue Collar Bastards is home playing video games right now. He is. You should definitely go check out his, uh, his Twitch, his live stream. Here we go. Oh, here he is right here. He's a goober. One. No way. That's funny. He's got the green screen going. He's hosting it right there on screen. Is he like a? Is he becoming like a YouTube sensation or what? Best villains ever, I think. Yeah, but uh, instead of YouTube, it's uh, Twitch, which is more of like a video game thing. How funny! Are you? He doesn't even know we're sitting here talking about him he while doesn't. he's doing his thing. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, people go on and they just watch him play videos live, and uh, they watch him play video games. Yeah, because no, mostly he's like he's watching a video right now. Most of the time, he's talking hella shit and and telling it's jokes. Fucking metal though. Yeah. So. But yeah, that's uh, that's his new gimmick right now, and he's uh, he's been having a lot of success nice, with it. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, my buddy Ray's also doing it. My friend Tay's also doing it. Uh, where they go out. Everybody's and they, doing it. Yeah, they go <laughs> and they they do live streams of uh of their video game play, and you get followers. Can you, you get, get paid, paid doing? Yeah, it. Yeah, you get paid for it, you man. Get paid? You get paid to play video games. Oh my god. So it's just like on YouTube where you get so many people watching, and then you get advertising dollars. So like I had to wait 15 seconds for an advertisement to play right before it pulled his video up. And so yeah, he'll get. Uh, hopefully, he gets money for that. I don't know if they're throwing ads on it before he's getting paid or not. But uh, no, he's been committed to that pretty hard, and he's got a whole cool little setup in his house. The green screen. He's got like a. It's like a large walk-in closet side space with a green screen and a supercomputer and hey, cameras man, any, and everything. Anybody who could figure that kind of action out and yeah. have fun, and, you know, he's probably getting stoned, hanging out, playing video games, doing his thing, having yeah. a good time. He's getting paid for it. Oh yeah, that's the American dream. It really is, man. And you know, it, it, the the more you do it, the more followers you get, and uh, and the more people you got watching at any moment, you're the more money you're making. So I mean, as long as you're entertaining, it's uh, it can be pretty profitable nice. right here. So yeah, uh, he's been doing that. Um, I haven't heard if he's been doing any music. We kind of all threw the music stuff away because there was nobody to play for. And it was just like, whatever, man. Oh, you know? that's crazy talk. Yeah, because it's just like, I mean, I have other shit I can do with my time right now, so I'll do other things well, that I've been interested this... in, like this. You know, this is a cool thing that came out of it since I didn't have time to do the Blue Collar Bastards thing. I started this whole podcast, and I got the, the SBS Productions thing off the ground, and, you know, we're making videos for people and doing a show, and I actually do have a bunch of stuff lined up that are as extracurricular, like lifestyle videos for the YouTube channel that we're, we're oh, you're we have all lined up. Yeah, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to be a YouTuber, dog. Like <laughs> if I can sit at home with my green screen or like go out and film and we're doing like nature footage and stuff like that right. and all kinds of stuff that's interesting for uh you know, for YouTube uh viewers and then, I mean, there's there's plenty of of opportunity to make money online and I can do this and then I can go out and make shows and I, I wish I, I wish I had that kind of mind. I still have to go out and literally hit the bricks. I think I'm going to do that till I die, you know, but yeah. literally go out and try which I'm good with, you know, it's it's all I know how to do, but yeah. but I, I I like having friends like you that know how to do stuff. That way I could always call upon you if I need it, you know. And you know you can, man. I I get called upon quite often, you know, people want to start a podcast or uh, you know, they they're interested in doing some other video related stuff or audio related stuff, and you know, I'm definitely a a, a resource for people to help them get going on all this and uh and I like helping my friends out. Nice. It's always fun. Or people can just uh I have a few people that I have lined up that want to start their own podcast. They're going to come on and do an episode with me and kind of see how it goes, you yeah, know. I gotta think and about that next time. Po- I, got, I got some ideas. I definitely want to uh, pitch. Yeah. Space Brain Station, dude. I've you know, pitch, pitch away, man. Whenever you're, you know, we'll, we'll talk about all kinds of stuff. Well, in the meantime, like you said, during the, this last year, you've come up with all these ideas of ways to not only just occupy your time, but be very productive and create new opportunities. Uh, for me, I've been mostly just drawing and painting as much as I could playing as many projects as I can, recording. I just uh, finished writing an album with Rowan Robertson, who was uh, once a guitar player for Ronnie James Dio. And oh, cool. Currently, he's with the uh, Rock Vault show here in Vegas. Yeah, he was discovered 
by Ronnie James Dio when he was like 17 years old. Like, you know, back then Dio was looking for his Randy Rhodes or yeah. his, his young gun. And after Vivian Campbell and a couple other guys, he found Rowan, he discovered Rowan Robertson. And he's been here in Vegas now for a couple of years. And he's been coming over to the house, to my house and literally in the garage, you know, we're, we're like working it like in the garage, old school, you know, like when we were kids having fun, just jamming. And we wrote a whole album. We're about to go in the studio and record the whole thing. Um, and it was really great getting to know him, of course. And he's a really cool dude and a great guitar player. Probably one of the coolest things, though, I asked him to share with everybody that I didn't know because I needed to know about Ronnie James Dio because I'm a big Ronnie James Dio fan like everybody else, right? So I go, was Ronnie James Dio a, a stoner? <laughs> and he's like, oh. Dude. <laughs> and I'm like, no way. You're telling me Ronnie James Dio is a stone. He's like, Ronnie James Dio was like one of those guys who always had good weed all the time. He goes, he wasn't just a stoner. He was a stoner. <laughs> and like they would they would be in their recording studio waiting for the weed to show up before they started laying down tracks. And when the weed showed up, uh, Ronnie would pick up the bag and go, Time for some hits, <laughs> you know, to write some hits. And uh, so then that was kind of cool and trippy to know about him. And so obviously he was obviously a laid back, mellow, cool dude too. But also he loved and was a huge fan of Mel Blanc, the voice for all the Warner Brothers cartoons, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig. Oh, okay. So I'm like, are you telling me that Ronnie James Dio used to love to get stoned and watch old Bugs Bunny cartoons? I'm like, that's the coolest thing I would ever know about Ronnie James Dio. And he wrote some of the greatest songs and one of the greatest rock singers of all time. But I, it was just a little factoid I didn't know about him. Ronnie James Dio is a stoner. <laughs> most most of the rockers uh, end up being pretty big potheads that I know of. Man. And <laughs> that's always kind of a staple in the green room of almost any club. You know any what, though? It's funny you say that. Clouds of pot I know too many rockers that aren't stoners. Yeah. They usually are the most like kind of uptight and kind of... There's definitely they, that, too. They're, they're not necessarily always easy to get along with. They get upset or angry really quick. They got a, a short fuse. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, dude, just kick back. Relax. Take a ball and hit. Yeah, I've definitely dealt with that end of the spectrum as well, man, where, you know, no, nothing's ever good enough. Everything's got to be perfect. And it's like, it's never going to be perfect. It's a live show. <laughs> yeah. Live show, man. You know, there's going to be all kinds of stuff that goes wrong. That's the fun of it. Have fun. Be in the moment. That That's yeah. something I've certainly, uh, I would pass along to anybody out there when it comes to music or being a musician or being on stage or creating music. Yeah. In the recording studios, um, at that I think a lot of musicians and a lot, not just musicians, I think this transfers into a lot of different types of career choices or whatever you want to do. But ultimately, it's like you spend so much time worrying about and being concerned about the event itself. You, it almost goes right by you. Yeah. And you forgot to have fun while you actually did it. And then you, always, and then you have these regrets afterwards. Oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. It's like, man, you put all that time into preparing for something now it's time to do it. Da da, I'm here. Let's have fun. You know what I mean? Let loose. Just, just play. Yeah. Play. Have a good time, because the moment is going to be gone before you know it. Yeah, and I think that's good advice, not just for playing music, but just in general, man. Like sure, as, anything. As, as often as you can possibly be in the moment and mindful of the present. It, 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 your life will be better, man. You know, because the more you're thinking about the future, or the more you're thinking about the past. The, the more time just slips by. And you can't control every little thing, no matter yeah. how much you try. Yeah. And beat you yourself up it. doing it. There's going to be a lot, like you said, things slip through the cracks. Yeah. There's a lot of things that slip through the cracks. Sometimes you just got to let it go and, and just go, okay, well, I can't control that. Yeah. I find that I, I try to just uh, keep it in my head that I can't control anything, man. Like, And we're I, all control freaks. Yeah. it's It it's, feels good to like know that things are going to go the way you want them to go, but it's like almost... Never does that occur. Yeah, you know, I uh, so I I always say just let it go, man, and it's gonna be what it's gonna be, and just accept the way it came out. And if it came out like seventy percent of the way from what you thought it was gonna be, that's a win. That's <laughs> yeah, a that's win. a big win. Yeah, because uh, most of the time it's gonna just trash, and and you just gotta be like, that's okay, that things fell apart, and you gotta deal with that whole emotional aspect of it, you know, instead of 
uh, you know, expecting everything to go 100% your way all the time. I, I Early in my days, like, especially playing music live on stage, you know, when I was really kind of coming up and just kind of getting the experience of going out and playing in clubs and in and, and all these different situa- concert situations, I, and, it, and it's not just me. I know it's a lot of other folks, too. I mean, people are just sweating it out before it's time to actually go out, not just sweating out of being nervous, yeah. but being their mind is so many other places than actually what they're supposed to do. And I think that if you don't go on stage and have your best, funnest time, you're going you're gonna to cheat everybody out there that actually spent money or took the time to go out to come see you in the first place. Yeah. You know, because I know when I go see any kind of performance, and the ones I'm sure you probably think that are the most memorable are when that individual who was entertaining was just relaxed and just had a good time and made you want to have a good time too. You know, I think you can't fool the audience. Yeah. You know, you have to if you if you come out uptight, not prepared or not not in the moment, people will see that while it's happening and wait for something to happen. Whereas if you come out there with not just confidence, that's just certainly part of it, but this is why you do it. This is why you spent all these years becoming who you were, playing an instrument or whatever it is you're doing to perform. You know, live in the moment, be there right then and there. And those people are going to go home and go, that's a memory I can take for the rest of my life and remember. And, and, and go, yeah, that was a great show. That was a great performance. That was, that was entertainment. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's called playing for a reason, right? You're up there. <laughs> you're up there to play, which means have fun, enjoy yourself. And uh, I think that's why people really liked the, the band I did with Tyler, the Cracker Man Band. Because it's not like we were writing amazing music, right? We weren't up there playing these oh, extravagant pieces. Oh, no, you're selling yourself pieces. short. There. You know, it was, it was, you know, it was three chord, punk rock, hard rock kind of t- tunes. But we were up there having a blast with each other. You know, we didn't give a fuck. We were smashing guitars. We were telling jokes. We were playing pranks on each other that nobody was prepared for on stage, you know. And it was just really, we were up there to have a good time. We didn't give a shit. And that's what I remember. Yeah. I mean, I opened up the whole show talking about how you threw your bass through the wall at the dive bar. Yeah. I mean, I'll never forget that moment for the rest of my life. (laughs) That's awesome, man. I got a, okay, I got a little story about, uh, talking about performances and shows uh, and being in the moment and all these things. I went, this is uh, many years ago, probably 25, 26 years ago. It was some random night, Wednesday night in Orange County. I'm looking for something to do just to go out and have a beer and just anything just to get out of the house. I go to the local corner bar and they have a band playing. It was like literally on a strip mall, small little bar, divey kind of room, long room, band at the very corner, three people at the bar and me having a beer and the bartender. That was it. And there was a three piece punk band and that three piece punk band played like there was a million people in that room. Hell yeah. And it was the greatest show on earth, the, the greatest opportunity on earth. And they were a great punk band. Uh, good musicians, cool, fun songs. I was entertained as fuck. And you would think that would be good enough. It's now almost two in the morning, closing time and all that. They, they do a final song on their set called Acting Like Black Sabbath. <laughs> and the lead singer put on this long black wig. Uh, he was playing a, a SG at the time. And they had this punk bo- band, co- punk song called Acting Like Black Sabbath. They played this song. It was funny as fuck. They were doing all these moves and kind of mocking 80s metal a little bit too at the time. And they smashed their instruments. Oh, God. I mean, the drummer, everybody, just like you're talking about, you yeah. did with Cracker Man in front of a full room, they smashed a the shit out of their instruments in this grand finale, like they, like they were the who. Yeah. And there's three people at the bar, and I was one of them. And, I, and uh. so, so I had to tell the story because if I don't tell the story, nobody else would know about it. Yeah. I saw the greatest performance. Nobody was there. There was no YouTube. There was no phones. There was no, nothing like that. Man, but I, I thought to myself as I left the bar, Man, that band really fucking put it all out there, you know? That's fantastic. (laughs) And they didn't look like they could afford new instruments either. Oh, man. (laughs) Yeah, smashing an SG. I mean, we would just buy, we would just buy, uh, you know, bases at the pawn shop. Like, I knew the guys around the town at the pawn shops, and they'd hold 
shitty ass you, squire basses for me. You had special smashing basses. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, go, I'd be like, I'm not even changing the strings on this thing. You know, we're just gonna, it's going, it's gonna get played for a few songs, and I'm gonna smash it through the wall. Give it to me for fifty bucks, man. Dude, you, know? you speared that wall with the net, the headstock. Like it was a sword. <laughs> and you were a Viking going into battle. And you uh, went into that wall. Kuh, kuh, just dug in there and left I, it there sticking out of the wall. And that's the memory that's etched in my brain. Yeah. Of, of that it, forever. It had to stick, man. You know? If oh, it yeah, didn't no, stick. You wouldn't stop until would... it stuck. I saw you. You jabbed and jabbed like, a, uh, like I said, like a barbarian. Yeah. You know, trying to hack a fucking monster. And that wall was, it was the drywall. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember the owner. I, I don't know if it was Nate at the time. Yeah, it's always been Nate. Oh, my God. I just remember everybody looking at like, what the fuck did he just do? Yeah. Well, Nate's my boy, man. And I was like, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll pay to patch the wall or whatever. He, goes, <laughs> he, he actually said to me, he goes, fuck it. I'm leaving it in the wall. That's part of the bar now. Oh, that would have been great. Yeah. 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 He ended up patching it because it actually went through the wall to the other to side. The other, to the other yeah. business on the other side of the wall. So, yeah. That's, yeah. He, uh, yeah. He, he ended up having to patch it to cover it all up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've I've known Nate forever. The memory lives forever. Yeah, it was that was so much fun, man. And that was always our strategy too. We're just gonna be such assholes every time we play. Oh, you did a we great put job at that. And we'll get blacklisted from every club progressively, so we have to keep playing different places and and you know we can't just keep going back and, <laughs> well they probably won't yeah. have you back. They a lot of times they wouldn't, but we <laughs> you know we do uh, like Cracker Man. Uh, now now since then I think Cracker Man not necessarily has disbanded because I know uh, Tyler has his own new projects that he's doing too. Uh, alligator Blood. Yeah, Alligator Blood, man. Um, but the name Cracker Man, I remember he also went out and played a few shows with some with some different players, and they were good. I liked them a lot. They were a different band and a different sound. But Cracker Man, the three piece, the original three piece that I remember, was certainly the uh, the thrash. Uh, renegade monsters on stage there to raise hell. Oh, we had a blast, man. We had a friggin' blast. Here's uh, Tyler's new project, uh, Alligator Blood, that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right on. Alligatorblood.com. And, uh, yeah, he's got he's got a whole new thing going, man. He shoots really good music videos, and uh, and he has a really good to- uh, good project that he's put together, man. It's it's a lot more polished than the Cracker Man thing was, and he's he's a hard working dude. Uh, I have uh, I, I I saw Tyler not too long ago, actually yeah. hanging out, and uh, we hung out and just kind of burned and talked a little bit and stuff. And it, it was the weirdest thing. I said, "Dude, I'm proud of you." And when I when I said that, I meant it in the sense that I remember when he was so off the hook, uncontrollable. Oh, he still uh, is. Oh, uh, he still is. But he was there was only, he only had one gear and it was, you know, tenth gear. <laughs> it was the yeah. highest gear. He was just go go go, and uh, he's he's uh, written a lot since then and produced a lot. Uh, reined in his uh, way of doing things to, uh, to benefit himself in in a more intelligent way, and that's what I mean by you know sometimes whether we like it or not, it sucks. We actually mature. Yeah. Then we get a little older and we figure shit out, you know. But uh, uh, to see to see people with that youthful angst and energy to go out there and, and really tear shit up and, and rein it in and, and turn it into a powerful, uh, positive force to move forward is pretty cool. Yeah, no, he's doing really good with it, man. And uh, I look forward to seeing him playing some shows out there soon now that everything's opening back up. Uh, so maybe we'll have him on. You know, I don't know. Well, and he, he could say as many nice things about me as I just did about him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but no, he's, you know, hopefully we'll see him out there playing some shows again and, and getting back to it, man. I know it was, uh, it meant a lot to him to have the band and, you know, be moving up like he was doing and trying really hard to be successful with that, man. That was like, that was like his freaking dream. I know a lot of people have like, this is my dream to be a rock star, but I, I've never seen anybody go after it like Tyler did. You know, yeah, he's just well, like, it's going to happen. If, if, if you, when you have that type of vision and you're willing to live the life to get it, it's going to happen for you, whoever you are, whatever it is. You, you're, you have to have that drive and that uh, constant just... Uh, focus of what you really want and not be distracted or detracted by everything else alone that comes alive. You know, some of the things I thought about, especially during this last year, kind of circling back to what we were talking about earlier, as, as now things are opening up and we're all kind of getting our, our quote unquote lives back, <laughs> um, 
for the better, hopefully. But we've all had an, a year now, over a year, to really not, well, I not we did lots of things, but we, I think we've all had a lot of self-reflection oh, yeah. along the way. And not just me and you, but every single person right now in the world that's even watching this right now. We all had time to think about us as what, what am I doing? What do I want? What's my meaning? What, what, what do I want when I do get things back? And now that things are coming back, we're all faced with these new uh, kind of possibilities and decisions. Do I want to just pick up where I left off? Uh, do I want to pick up where I left off and do things different? Do I want to try things new altogether? And I think one of the things that I thought about the most is that when I had nothing to do, or nowhere to go, I ultimately came back to the pen and the pencil and the paintbrush and the music playing in the garage. And I think to myself, what, it, what was it like when you first picked up your instrument, Jason, or anybody out there, and what it, why did you do it? In other words, when you decided I wanted to play music or whatever it is you want to do, what were those things that drove you to where you did it 10 hours a day didn't even think about it? You Dude, know? I know, right? Yeah, you know, and, and and here along the way now, all these years for me, so I can only share my personal experience. You know, when I first started playing drums, I wanted to be the next Rush or whatever. That type, those were my ambitions. That's yeah. why I picked up drumsticks to play like some of the greats, or at least try to. Um, and I and I feel like I've done a pretty good job of it in becoming my own uh, person, my own musician. Um, but it's like, why did I do it when I was 14 and 15 and 16 and all those years? It's because I wanted that. And somewhere along the years, when we're chasing that $50 or that $80 or <laughs> that $100 bill at the end of the night, all of a sudden, all those hopes and dreams and thoughts and ambitions start to take a, a little bit of a backseat. Now you're doing things, whether it's musically or whatever, to go just chase a buck. Yeah. You're just chasing a buck. And here we are now, all these uh, th these months later, and things are opening up. It's like, do I just want to pick up where I where I left off, or do I want to relive my 14, 13, 14 year old vision of my future, and try to go out and try to make something happen as far as that goes, and create something new, build something new, make something new. So that's where I am at, and I think a lot of other folks are too. And I and I could see you are obviously by the way you've built your studio up and everything. You know, it's like, let, let's let's go back and relive those same types of ambitions and have that type of drive that you're talking about, like Tyler has, even still after all these years. Yeah. It's like, let, let's go be that rock star or whatever, you know, whether you become it in anybody else's eyes or whatever, that's a whole different story. Um, but when you know that you're living that life of what you really want to do with it, um, it seems to me it's going to be a lot or is a lot more satisfying and validating and all those other things. It just feels better, and it means more. Yeah, and we shouldn't be chasing the fruits of our labor anyways, man. You know, whenever you're doing something only to get to the the benefits at the end of the, the road... To pay a bill. Yeah, it, that, that's, <laughs> that really detracts from it all, because a lot of times maybe you're not going to get everything that you thought you were going to get out of it, or even half of what you thought you were going to get out of it. And it's like you need to be doing things for the sake of doing them just because this is the moment you're in in life and, and I want to live these moments progressively as opposed to uh, I'm trying to grasp at this brass ring at the end, you to, know? Just, just to pay a bill. Yeah. Because that's what everything is. You're chasing a buck every day just to go pay a phone bill or electric bill or whatever. I mean, yes, you have to pay those bills, but it doesn't mean you can't, you know, you have to just beat yourself up just to do that and not and forget about what it is that really makes you happy inside. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that's a that's a beautiful place to end it, man. We've been doing the <laughs> it's uh what fifty five minutes going on, and uh, yeah, you talk yeah. too much. Yeah, oh, no, I, I, <laughs> I know I'm just a, a jabber jaw over here, man. But yeah, that's that's a beautiful place to 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 put it, you know. And uh, I I really appreciate having you on the podcast to the fullest with Jason Froberg. Thank you very much for having me. And one Michael more Mason, time, yeah, put that out there. All right. I'm not going to do the whole entire list of what you need to do, but I'll tell you where to go. Las Vegas Cannabis Awards .com. Register, figure it out. Find me on artist slash painter category. Vote for me every single day 
because I don't just want to win. I want to overwhelm. I want to win a, a landslide. I'm looking for a landslide. Uh, there, there are other great artists and other people up for nominations too. I hope you'll check them all out. But definitely make sure you vote Stoner Dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast, and uh, I really appreciate your time, man. And go vote. Go vote Stoner Dude. Later. Peace. Thanks for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.